and I'm certain Cock aren't going to be happy with that, but there are rules and a schedule that we have to keep to, so... They, they do like have they seven. Do, they do have seven. Laban joining. Laban has been around for a while, uh, in and out of the competitive scene for the past three years, playing every g games here and there, never sticking in one place for too long, but he is definitely a decent player. So... We'll have to see how this goes. And the majority of the Cuck lineup here, missing one player. Uh, the Black Hand, I believe, is the player that they are missing from last time. And one other player who they have replaced with Laban. So how, how detrimental is that? Uh, being down one player is a pretty big disadvantage because, especially in a trench cap, the way it works is if you have more players in the trench than the enemy team, then you begin to cap the trench. Obviously, it's a huge disadvantage to have one less player because if they have all eight of their team in their trench, you can't match that. So uh, it definitely means you have to play more aggressively and more risky when you're down a player like that, but it's certainly not impossible for them to win being down a player. We are starting, as always, with Entente on attack. Yep. Welcome to the front. And it also helps that even though they're down a player, they are on the favored side of this map, so... better Aggressive to push by Cuck right away, right up the middle. And it looks like they have got Black Hand in, so they aren't going to be down players for too long. And it looks like Laban going to get into this finger here almost immediately. He's going to get taken out, though, by Feeder. And Dragon's Ken playing up on this little bit of a hill and clinking ink as well, picking players from a Average Joe's. They're going to get picked from the far right side, though. The Black Hand pushing up there, going to take out Kifrin. And a good play from Cuck here to get in here. Dragon's Ken holding this angle, clinking ink, playing relatively aggressively. Great play so far from Cuck. Making Ooh. this assault relatively Great quickly. Great PhD, Clink just oh. And uh, we've got Kalinkadink running ham down there. Yeah, and average Joe Lone Wolfos about to take a shot in the back. Oh, Hachim misses mount. twice. Yeah, but Lone Wolf Wolfos definitely the Lone Wolf right now. Oh, but big spawn spawning. for Cuck. This is going to be a situation where Pijacker might shine, though. And he will, and the rest of his team as well. Great play, three kills there by Pijacker. Clinketing and Dragons can chiming in, chiming in as well. Neil now alone, Ironstorm, laying in a pit all by himself. Trying to wait for the rest of his team. Clinketing, doing well again. Dragons can wow Cuck just... For, Continuing the momentum from their last match, and Average yeah. Joe's not really knowing what to do here. Average Joe just rolled out of that spawn. And if Cart right. keeps up the momentum like this, this could be a relatively quick match. Indeed. Lone, Lone Wolfos moving up through the center of the map. Grenades getting chucked in, those could do some damage. Clinket ain't gonna notice that and move away from it before it does him any damage. Average Joes, uh, again, with really uncoordinated attacks in this first half, uh, seem to be just kind of trickling one and two at a time. Yeah, great foe trying to kind of take a picker's role, but not really having much success at it. Playing some relatively static positions that don't give him very many angles. Black hand. Doing well. Kalinkadink, 14 and 0 right now. Not a single death to him right now and 14 kills. Great play from him. Though this nade might do it for him. He's gonna, oh, he's going to notice it and fall back. For uh, for reference for our viewers, Kalinkadink has 14 kills. The next highest is 4. Uh, is, no, nah, Dragon's Kill. Oh, 8. Excuse me. Yep. Dragon's Kill does have 8. Still doubling second place. So off to a very hot start from Dragon's Kill and, uh, and Kalinkadink. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know how Angry Joes are supposed to answer a performance like that. Clinkadink just feeling extremely comfortable right now, doing basically whatever he wants. Playing an excellent position there as a picker, and just picking off anyone from Angry The Angry Joes not only aren't on the attack right now, but they are having trouble even getting out of their own trench Yeah. while on attack. More big losses there on the airstrike.
and beautiful spreading crossfires from Cuck here. They're all over the trench, getting those nice crossfires on the left and right and in the middle. Yeah, there's skin. there's no uh, uh, there's no airstrike that would kill more than one or two of them right now, unlike average Joes, who seem to be clustering up. And I think Klinkadink finally taken out there after 18 kills. Excellent play by him. Oof, next and highest is gonna be Piejacker with nine. And Neil and a few of his friends getting a bit of a position there. Blackhand's gonna have something to say about that though. Blackhand going down, but Dragon Skin gets Jojo the trade. Jojo McDougal too. And I, once again, Cuck are gonna be on the attack. Just wow. Just absolutely rolling through this map. Making easy work of average Joes. Laban using the pistol. Clearing some players there. Requiem of Flight still on zero kills. Doesn't matter. His team is rolling through. He doesn't even have to do anything. He just gets to sit back to relax and enjoy the ride that Klinkadink, Dragons, Ken, and Pie Jacker are giving him. Ironstorm gonna make a good push here. Laban missing a lot of pistol shots, but gets it in the end. Ironstorm with two kills though. It really and seems like the uh, the only team, the only player keeping up here is on on the uh, on the central powers is gonna be the great PHO. Uh, yeah, with nine kills. Yeah, great foe doing well. Neil doing okay. Ironstorm not terrible, but really no one shining in the way that we would hope they would. Piejacker just getting in behind those lines. Another melee kill for Piejacker. Dragons can coming up and just clearing that metal. They're gonna have capped that trench and not much that average Joes can do about it. They're gonna get to push on this right side, but plenty of crossfires for Cuck. Yeah, average Joe. Uh, back backs against the wall quickly in this match. And that's the way this map can go. This map can be very, very close, or it can be, especially for the Entente, on, it's very easy for the Entente to get rolling on this map and just kind of clean things up. And we're definitely seeing a, a large skill disparity between Cuck right now and Average Joes. Indeed. There was, uh, there was a part of me that was, that was pulling for him. <laughs> <laughs> but things are getting ugly here at Argon. Yep. Yes, just absolute domination right now for Cuck. Big Elude getting close in the middle, throwing some nades, but not really going to achieve anything like effective with that. The Great Foe pushing in again, but he's going to get taken out by the combination of Requiem of Flight and the Dragon's Kin. This is brutal. Yes, it is. Requiem of Flight still not even having to get any kills yet, and his team, team is still dominating. Dragon's Kin getting close to matching Kalinkadink now. And Average Joe's losing a player as well. And at this point, Cuck are just biding their time until the match is over, because it's going to be done in 17 seconds unless Average Joe's can get a foothold. Average Joe's in a lot of trouble here. And they're going to make one last just last ditch effort but only five seconds left for them and that's gonna be game oof and that's the half well guys we uh we definitely saw saw that was we thought we thought uh that uh sms smw was was a one-sided match this this was uh cuck <laughs> really taking it to him there <laughs> yep
Uh, we got a we got a second half here that uh, average Joe's is really gonna have to turn things around. They will be on the attack, uh, and they will taunt. be on. Yep, they will be on that favorite Anton side. But so they do have a couple things working for them here. But uh, we are gonna need to see a total role reversal. Yeah, um, given the skill gap we just saw in the first half, I have trouble seeing a way that average Joe's can bring it back. But it's always possible. Um, obviously, uh, I would have said the same thing after the first half of their match against SMW, and they did pretty well in that second half, so we'll just have to see. <clears throat> they might be a team that takes a little bit of warming up. And we're not quite live yet. We still have to uh, restart the match one more time, I do believe. Well, as you've said, the um, <clears throat> average Joes just don't quite have the tournament experience uh, that that a few of these teams do have. Uh, I, th I believe you said something similar about Cuck. Is that right? They are they are well, uh, they have relatively new to the scene. Yeah, I mean, Clinket Inc. has been around for a while, so certainly his experience will help them. Laban as well, but a lot of these players are relatively new. But clearly, they have it. They may not have a lot of tournament experience, but clearly, they do have a lot of individual skill. And they are a man down. I mean, we got to give him that. Like, it's yeah, that's true. They have a lot. Uh, averages have done a man down, but uh, so as a uh, uh, as a competitor yourself, maybe not so so much currently, but as a former competitive player. Um, what are what are the kind of things that that average Joe's just needs to work on? What what were uh, what went so wrong there? I, I think their their uh, attacks need to be more organized. Obviously, uh, their individual skill is not at, at the same level as, as a team like Cuck or possibly even a team like SMW. Though they did give a good fight to SMW, um, they need to be more organized in their attacks, more organized in their defense. Um, I think they need to know when to give up space, like when they're attacking. Uh, this we haven't really seen that that much in this match because they haven't really gotten a chance to attack. But in their first match, when they would attack, they would attack until the bitter end, and they would never give themselves time to set up their defense, which gave SMW a lot of chances to uh, get quick captures. Uh, that's something that I see a lot of new teams struggle with. So those those are the basic things. Um, working on teamwork, I think teamwork is one of the biggest things in this game uh, that new teams struggle with, especially teams that haven't played together a lot. See, though Cuck is new, these are players who play pubs together a lot. Uh, they're they're a group of pub players who are friends who decided to form a team together. So they do have some team chemistry and they understand how each other plays and what roles they want to take. Um, Uh, they just they they have a chemistry and a, and a teamwork together that average Joe's doesn't necessarily have. But looks like we'll be seeing uh, Cuck starting off on defense and average Joe's on the attack. We Again. are uh, we are also observing our first bit of shit talk uh, as <laughs> as the Cucks have promised average Joe's that a curb stomp awaits. <laughs> Stay classy, Cucks. Yes. And but Dragon Ken living up to the expectation, getting four kills straight away at the beginning, but going down, he's not gonna match Kalinkadink's run from last match or last last half. So we've got Who Am I Blowing uh, taking the point here in the in the in the middle of that. Uh, you got I heard you guys call it a the finger. Yep, that's okay. uh, what that's often referred to as, uh, as it kind of sticks out from the trench mm -hmm. like a finger. Um, and holding that position, that is a strong position to hold, though. He's going to have some nades coming his way, though not quite landing where they were intended to. And again, we just see the slow aggression from Average Joe's. Really the opposite of what we saw from Cuck in that first half, where they just pushed extremely aggressive right up close to that front of that finger and picked from there. We see Average Joe's instead sitting in the middle of no man's land, picking at long range where they don't really have very many angles to take out those Cuck players. Pijacker is going to push up quite aggressively and take out uh, Bigaloot. 
it, it does seem like Average Joe's is, have, is making a bit more of an effort to uh, uh, just simply outshoot them. They, they're sitting back and, and um, trying to get a couple kills, get a couple picks before they uh, go head first into the trench. Into the, in the previous round, it seemed like they were um, a bit more quick to just dive. Yeah, another interesting thing to note is that Average Joes are running double artillery right now, which is not something we see very often, and especially on this map, because this is actually the only map in the game, and not everyone knows this, that the Creeping Barrage is actually nerfed on this map. Because the map is so small, if you were to use the Creeping Barrage that was enabled on other maps, it would actually basically cover the entire enemy trench. So the, the Creeping Barrage is about half as big as it is on the other maps on this map. So it's interesting to see them running that double artillery when it's actually not as effective on this map. And of course, when you say interesting, you you mean that they have made a pretty clear tactical error. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Gotcha. I'm from the Midwest. I'm aware of what interesting means or, or <laughs> different. That's different. <laughs> this is a different strategy. Making good defense, though, against the push here by Tuck, though, taking out a few players. That's not going to stop the rest of these players, though. Pyjacker and Dragon's Ken going to push up rather aggressively confident in their ability to take out Lone Wolfos here. And Lone Wolfos, living up to his name, always seems to be the last one alive for Average Joes. But it's going to be down to Laban and Hachiman. Pyjacker in the middle as well to take out these players. Laban doing well with the pistols. Pyjacker is going to go down to Great Foe, though. And this is a trench... Oh, man, it, it is capped by the cuck side. And it is a difficult trench to cap, as there's lots of easy ways back in for the average Joes. But cuck doing a good job. We, we might have a few average Joes coming up. Uh, oh, never mind, they all turned around. Oh, boy. Average Joe's might be in trouble here. Oh, an excellent grenade there. Oh, that is an artillery strike from Average Joe's. They got to capitalize on this. Yeah, they got to try and recap that trench while Cuck has been kicked out, but Kalinkin ain't coming in, and we've seen what he's been able to do in the past. Great defensive nade there oh, yep. from Angry Joe's. And great foe. Great foe definitely showing up and showing that he's one of the better players on this team. Iron Storm trying to salvage that that conflict. Oh, and with an excellent kill around the corner there. And who am I blowing gonna get in here? Pyjacker pushing on the right side, he can always do a bunch of damage. Great in those melee fights is Pyjacker. Those close range fights. Like I said earlier, he's gonna be uh Ooh, Pyjacker attempted to go in for another melee kill there was met with a bullet. Looks like uh, the Black Hand pushing down this trench here. And we didn't see Average Joe's being able to capitalize on that situation they had earlier and recap the trench. The trench still belongs to Cuck. Even though they've been keep getting wiped out of the trench, they're able to keep Average Joe's out of it. For long they have, they have they put on happen. just enough pressure. But it looks like Average Joes might be able to change that narrative now as they're about to recap the trench. We might see a big play from Laban here if he can sneak in. Oh, and he is shut down. And that's going to be the first cap for Average Joes in this half, and in fact in this entire game. They need to, uh, they need to make up two more trenches, is that right? Yes, Three. that is correct. Oh yeah, three. I think something like that. Three in order to uh, in order to push this game into a third match or a third round. Actually, I believe that if oh, there was a tie here, it would go to kills. Yes, yes, it would. I apologize. Um, but that seems relatively unlikely as Cuck are unabating in their attack. And who am I blowing? Pushing up, going to be taken out by Neil. A Pyjacker. Oh, melee kill for Pyjacker. Yeah, Pyjacker just wreaking havoc in the center of this trench. And Kalinkadink going insane again as well. Kalinkadink with 19 kills at the moment. 
Make that 20. <laughs> and Hachi Man again with the excellent nades there oh. to take out some of the average Joe's players. Neil still causing havoc here though. He's finally going to get taken down by Kalinkadink. Feet are also putting on an effective flank here. Finally gets shut down. He got about four kills in that trench. And great foe. Let's see what he can do. He's been one of the better players so far, but he gets taken out straight away. By Kalinkadink. Once again. And it looks like Lone Wolf just creeping into this far left side. And that's going to be a cap again for Cuck. Lone Wolf is the only one in here. Looks like a push is coming down this connector here. From Average Joe's, three of them about to push down here. Big loot, great foe. Big conflict here. Gonna get taken out though by Kalinkadink. Kalinkadink has to be your MVP for this match, just feeling at home on Argon. Yeah, and that's gonna be again. a complete wipe for Average Joe's. 26 kills from Kalinkadink. And this trench is going to be held pretty firmly by the Cucks. So we do see Cuck being on kind of the wrong side of the map here. Might give Average Joe's a chance to get a bit of a foothold as Jojo pulls off a little bit of a flank with Lone Wolfos and they do take out a good chunk of that Cuck team. They're just gonna spawn right back in though on that left side. Oh, and this artillery strike was just a few meters away from uh, wiping out a, just about a whole spawn. Fortunately, not placed just about right, and that's going to be pretty much all of AJ rip uh, getting killed again. And uh, yeah, they're going to respawn once again. And a nice nade there would have taken out a player, but Piojacker takes them out with his rifle before that happens. And Kalinkadink with an excellent flank here pushing into the no man's. Only going to get one for it, but he could have gotten more. It's going to put them on edge. Pijacker is going to take out Neil. Lone Wolfos, again, just creeping up on this left side. He's going to be taken out by Hachiman as soon as he peeks around. Unless he's quick with a shot. Pijacker with the aggression. They're going to know those positions Indeed. because of their recon planes. And Great Foe getting in on the far left here. Black Hand going to get taken out. Uh, so if you could, could you explain... Um, the uh, the role of the NCO, uh, I know, uh, I'm sure some people are wondering where these airstrikes might be coming from, who's who's making this happen. So each uh, squad has an NCO. Uh, the NCO has some elevated abilities, such as they can use their call-ins, which, depending on their squad, it may be an airplane that tells you where the enemy is, it may be uh, an artillery strike, it may be some poisonous gas. Um, there's also smoke in the game, which we don't see used very often because it's just not as good as the poisonous gas. But and also, depending on the squad, sometimes the uh, the NCO has the ability to spawn in teammates, whereas others can't, or they have some special abilities when it comes to spawning teammates. That varies depending on the the the, the type of uh, squad you're using. But usually, the NCO has some sort of elevated spawning ability, as, as opposed to the rest of their team. Um, Which is why we're seeing those uh, those larger spawns uh, right on right in the middle of the trench. It's often the NCO's job to uh, to play pretty uh, pretty late to to not be so aggressive uh, to ensure that you're actually able to spawn your team back into the fight. Yeah, except the only exception to that case is the recon squad, where in the recon squad everyone acts as an NCO when it comes to spawning, which means anyone can spawn in their entire squad, which is what makes the recon squad very powerful. And later today, when we see PC and 1E play, we're likely to see those teams run double recon, because it is a very strong uh, uh, ability for an aggressive team with very highly skilled players. Lone Wolf being left all by himself out on that right side. You might have an opportunity here to catch some people by surprise. Yes, and Black Hand pushing up on, it, on that right side, and they're going to clear out the entire thing, and they're going to be pushing into the AJ's next trench. Not as dominant as that first half, but still a very dominant half from Cock here, and definitely yeah. going to be a, a resounding victory for them putting themselves in first seed, that means they will be playing first Emperor's Royal Dragoons in the next match in that first semifinal. And I do believe that 
means that SMW will be playing uh, PC in that last uh, semifinal of the night. And uh, unfortunately for Average Joes, that's going to be it for their tournament. They're going to be eliminated in this round robin group stage. Putting up a good fight, though, not getting completely uh, rolled. No, nope. like getting average getting... Joe's once again having a better second half than first. Uh, much more competitive in this match. Definitely a team that takes a little bit to warm up. I, I wonder if the randomizer had uh, chosen for them to have two matches back to back, if they might have had a better run of it, because they do seem to be a bit, little bit of more of a, a team that takes a little bit to warm up. Um, but unfortunately, their two matches were separated by another match, so perhaps they weren't as warmed up as they could have been. But still playing well, considering that they're mostly uh, not a competitive team, just a, a group of people who wanted to play in the tournament and uh, got together in order to do that. So uh, they did better than I thought they would do. So probably they, uh, they definitely they hung with uh, SMW as uh, uh, Surgen Mine and Furfer. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, yeah, this this uh, again, uh, although a better second half, uh, Cox really taking it to him here. Yeah, they were able to get a cap this half and uh, bring it almost. It seems like this match will go almost all the way to full time, if not all the way to full time. But uh, nonetheless, a pretty dominant performance from Cuck, though. Uh, Average Joe's uh, showing that uh, they at least have something to say. Our, our next match uh, today is going to be uh, Emperor's Royal Dragoons uh versus who who are we going to see in that in that in that first um, they will uh, they will play the they will play the first seed from the group stage which assuming cuck win this match which it seems very much likely likely that they will um it should be cuck so it should be first emperor's royal dragoons versus cuck and then the second semifinal will be uh uh pc versus is smw So we got three. We got three games in a row with the with the cucks here. We're getting getting the old triple cuck. Yep, my good old triple cuck. Always fun to have. <laughs> Looks like Average Joe is gonna draw this out a little bit more though. Getting a foothold on his far right side. Mm -hmm. Black hand and requiem of light. Gonna go and try and clear that out. Requiem of light being one of the uh, the. Uh, lower performers on on the Cuck squad. Yeah, most uh, certainly. Sitting at but, ten and eleven right now, but still not doing terrible for himself. Uh, this is definitely a squad which doesn't have any really bad players on it. So, def uh, well, an average Joe's even look. If you look at their kills, they have no one who's really slacking extremely more than anyone else. So, uh, good to see some well balanced teams. Uh, Indeed, so it seems the like uh, the great is it the great foe, the great pho? Is it like the soup? I don't know. I've just been saying the great foe, but uh, who knows? He's definitely it, shown a good performance, even uh, indeed able to have more kills than deaths uh, against a team such as Keck. So a good he play and, from him. He and Iron Storm, the only ones that'll be able to say that. So and, that's it, uh, guys. Yep, that's the group stage completed. We will now have the two semifinals coming up next. Uh, the first one will be. Um, uh, 1E versus Cuck coming up uh, right in a moment uh, after the break. <laughs>